say we talked about the age group is it any particular gender also which hits the most for diabetes and if yes and if you want to say women if i must say does it uh, any way uh, you know alarm them or any way harm them especially when they are conceiving or in the process of being pregnant so gender equality i'll say roughly is not just one it's not a problem but unfortunately like i am practicing daily and in delhi i have seen that somehow the women are less active men still have to go out men also the women are housewives over yes. there as a result although they are working very very hard at home and they do stuff which men cannot yeah but yes, still yes. the sense that the absolute out and out physical activity is lacking yeah. number one number two somehow women in india i cannot understand why i have this self sacrificial attitude mm-hmm. you're right that okay i'll take care of everyone but i'll not take care of us so these are the two main thing which i realize that uh, not caring enough about yourself right now and not having enough physical exercise are the two things which hit women the most that is why i am seeing more diabetes in people because they are inactive they don't take they don't even take care of themselves they were just so busy at home and they they get tired and then they think ki ab khana khane ka time ho gaya ye ho gaya wo ho gaya so they just keep themselves back packing and don't go out for a walk or whatever absolutely yeah. so the kind of uh, alibi is the bahana which i heard for not walking or tremendous really yeah okay. so they will be like okay main to ye karna pada so sometimes i have to i have to tell them see i am a doctor i am going to 12 hours a day but still i try to take out 45 minutes to per day do something some kind of physical activity to work out with this if i can take out time you can also yeah. so i can understand how size are busier than uh, yeah but still it's absolutely important paramount importance 40 minutes a day 5 days a week that tick them should be there for everyone diabetic or not diabetic 40 minutes per day 5 days a week so that is what is required so regarding the other aspect of pregnancy yes diabetes pre existing diabetes makes it difficult for women to conceive uncontrolled diabetes during pregnancy is catastrophic so if someone diabetes is uncontrolled huge implications on the mother and on the child even if we control it very well although these problems they really really reduce exponentially but still they are at risk the child can be a bit bigger in size they can have uh, early deliveries they can have high blood pressure also during the time of the deliveries so these are the common things which we see in pregnancy with diabetes but do understand that especially during a pregnancy or before you get pregnant for women who have been living with diabetes make sure your sugar are perfectly well controlled and your caregiver or your doctor is aware that you are planning for a pregnancy because there are certain things to be done certain medications to be stopped some tablets are okay and basically insulin is okay during pregnancy these should be done before you even try for conception it's very important that this should be done beforehand rather than coming with me coming to me pregnant with 500 sugars so you do understand that initial phase of development for the kid is very important. okay and does miscarriages also happens in like way more in the women with diabetes rather than in the women which who doesn't have that yeah absolutely so enough data exists worldwide to confirm that almost all complications of miscarriage there is a high blood pressure then cesarean deliveries requirement of cesarean deliveries and all of the placental problems all of these occur at a much higher rate in people with diabetes more so with people who are uncontrolled lesser with people who are well controlled so don't stress if you are a diabetic woman with uh, an and an up pregnant why because if you get it well controlled by a good doctor your pregnancy is going to go pretty smooth number one Number two, do not self drink ever, especially during pregnancy, because the targets are very different. So the normal sugar levels which we target in pregnant women are absolutely different from what we have to target for a normal garden variety of diabetic patient. So uh, see, I have a lot of friends and families, and they are like even my cousins, anybody in the family, a lot of friends also. They are pretty much fit, and it's uh, a good problem, nahi hai, but. Uh, I have this one cousin. She's pretty much fit, but then her nani had diabetes, then mother had diabetes, and now she's also having diabetes. 
is it hereditary and genetic as well if no matter how much you get to get fit still it happens to you and does type also like varies ki agar aapki nani ko type 1 hai to aapko bhi type 1 hi hoga ya fir wo doesn't vary but diabetes so there are a whole subset of genetic kinds of diabetes which are fortunately rare mm-hmm. but they are there so there are certain flag signs red flag signs which make us aware that okay this fellow may be having a genetic kind of diabetes because tests for them are pretty expensive so the basic tests for genetic diabetes are around 20000 okay so whom do we get these done in so genetic type genetic diabetes are called modi okay. m o d y so these are these patients usually have diabetes in three generations like you said nani mother and the person who was her son but the age of onset in all three should be less than 30 should be less than 30. so if any one of them has had the age of onset beyond 40 50 because in india many times you get diagnosed very late so if 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 the nani was diagnosed at 40 Mother was diagnosed at 35, mm. and she's diagnosed at maybe 30. Because obviously now everyone's getting diagnosed faster, which is a good thing. So then probably I'll work up for then diabetes. If I'm pretty sure that the other two were normal diabetics, type 2 diabetics. So if that was the case, then in such a thing I would probably let it go. Now regarding the normal variety of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. So type 2 diabetes also see if one of your uh, parents has got diabetes then you have a 1% chance of developing type 2 diabetes okay. in the next one. if both your parents have then it goes to around 7% okay. diabetes so this is the normal kind of diabetes all said and done finally you have to understand that type 2 diabetes is basically a lifestyle disease so if even if your parents have diabetes if you maintain a good lifestyle if you maintain good physical activity good diet in such a scenario you probably be able to avoid diabetes all your life so uh, there are see diabetes sometimes people are like ab mujhe diabetes hai ab to kuch nahi ho sakta and uh, people do have this myth also ki diabetes ek baar ho gaya to ya to it treatable hi nahi hai ya fir ab to hum zindagi bhar sugar kha hi nahi payenge matlab there is lot of you know chaos around the myth so as we talk about diabetes and people are very about you know worried abhi myth se bahut sari ki abhi mere ko diabetes ho gaya to i don't think i'll be able to enjoy my life na main meetha kha paunga ki nahi kha paunga ya kha paunga ki nahi kha paunga ab mujhe zyada workout karna padega control karna padega so is diabetes if you diagnose diabetes at a very early you know type 1 you you know aap bahut hi early stage mein bilkul hi aapko start just hua hai body like this pouching you bilkul is just you know pinch of start is it reversible like aap us body line se bilkul hi wahan chale jao where there is no sign of diabetes you know is it like that okay so in that front so we have to be very clear that there are two kinds of diabetes so type 1 diabetes is the one in which there is less insulin mm-hmm. and the treatment is with insulin injections and that is the one which we see in kids so it should be very clear that that is not reversible and no attempt should be made to try to stop insulin in such kids and such adults who have type 1 diabetes now the other kind of diabetes is type 2 so which is a usual diabetes that we see in adults so that is basically even have enough insulin rather the insulin level is higher in type 2 diabetes it is just that insulin is not working properly so what we call as insulin resistance so what does insulin normally do so normally it picks up the blood glucose from the blood pushes it into the muscles and into the liver so that it can be used for in our energy requirement for any kind of movements which you do we use glucose as a substrate So the problem in type 2 diabetics is that there is insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance it prevents the insulin from working efficiently. So when it's not able to work efficiently, our body produces extra insulin. Okay. So luckily, there are certain things, certain medicines, and lifestyle changes which can actually improve insulin resistance. The, the insulin resistance reduces once a person loses weight. Builds up muscle mass by exercising. 
So, and obviously certain medicines, they, they are very good medicines available now which reduce insulin resistance. So the moment someone's insulin resistance is reduced, whatever insulin is, is there in the body that will start working much better. So say a person is 80 kgs mm. and the height is maybe 5 feet mm. and gets the weight down to 60 kgs yeah. and builds up a little bit of muscle mass by working out in the gym. So his insulin resistance will actually get reversed and many such patients will actually reverse their diabetes. So there are two terms, remission and reversal, both are possible. But the basic requirement for that is lifestyle changes, initially medicines will help you get there. So once your sugars are well controlled on medicines, then make sure that your lifestyle changes continue to such an extent that you are able to keep the insulin resistance in check. And as a result, you can be off medicines for years altogether. So, uh, what is the range? So, uh, see, a uh, range as in there are a lot of borderlines. That you know, there's one of borderline. He up to up to type one start over here, type two over If there is that kind of, if I may ask, and then there is this borderline. Ki ab zyada diabetes over here, and there is this just pinch of starting. What are the numbers of that borderline? Where I can start with more healthier life, like you said, I can reverse it if I'm still on a water. See the. There are three tests which we do fasting sugar and uh, sugar up to us after the meal and HDA1C, which is basically telling us about the average sugar over the last three months. So to keep it simple, you'll have that you have diabetes if your fasting sugars are more than 120, post-pandemic sugars are above 200, definitely you have diabetes and you need to visit a healthcare professional and start some treatment. If your sugar, fasting sugars are between 100 and 120 and maybe between post pandemic post meal sugars are between 120 and 180, that is the time when you should seek medical help, seek medical advice. You may not be started on the medicine, you may be started. But definitely that's the time lifestyle changes are required. Good tool is HbA1c. HbA1c is a test which tells us uh, blood glucose level in the last uh, three, months. three months. So mm-hmm. above 6.5 means you are a diabetic, mm-hmm. you need to take medicines and you need to do a lot of lifestyle changes to get it under control. Between 6 and 6.5 definitely you are what we call as pre-diabetic. Mm-hmm. So the guidelines have changed. So for most of the type 2 diabetic, pre-diabetic patients, uh, we do start one or two medicines which actually help in reversal. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid of starting these medicines on time. So these medicines once started on time, they will help you tackle the core defects of diabetes and they are being started with the whole idea of trying to reverse the insulin resistance and trying to reduce, uh, reduce the glucose toxicity, the, the problem which glucose brings to the body. Don't be averse to starting these medicines. These medicines have been started, they have been going on for the last 40, 50 years and they are good, simple medicines with minimal side effects. Side effects are not much and are usually very well tolerated by everyone. Mm-hmm. So anyone with an HB1C above 6 should visit a doctor and start lifestyle modification. Above 6.5, definitely some medicine should be there. Between 6 and 6.5, let it be decided by your doctor. Okay. And this is regarding type 2 diabetes. Okay. Type 1 diabetes is a different ballgame altogether. So as I said, type 1 is when insulin is less. Here, should start off with medicines at a very early stage. Unfortunately, type 1 diabetes does not present at the start. So it is usually diagnosed when the sugars are through the roof. And sugars are usually very high in people with type 1 diabetes. Kids usually, unfortunately, are diagnosed with type 2 di- type 1 diabetes. Then they end up in the emergency room oh. with vomiting, stomach pain, and first time the sugar is checked, and it's 400, 500. That's the way it is diagnosed. So there's no, no borderline type 1 diabetes. And borderline thing is only with type 1. So, uh, doctor, what are the medications medication so, uh, See, what are the medications that are very important? What are the medications that are very important? So, are there medicines which help you, you know, like are there medicines which help you controlling? What kind of medications are there which would be recommended by, say, you to help people lose weight, to stay fit, and to not gain also? Because I think some medicines make you swell also. Sometimes there are a lot of other things. So as you said, a lot of good medicines are available and each of them come with their positives and negatives. So, but you have to understand that all medicines are not the same. So, 
luckily for everyone for the last 10 15 years some very good medicines have uh, come into the market with good strength of data behind them they have proven to be very effective and very good so the primary aim of medicine is to control your blood glucose because obviously once you control the blood glucose obviously you reduce the symptoms and reduce the complications too but now these medicines they actually are bringing benefits to the table some of the older medicines although they are extremely good for controlling blood glucose they have their own problems like swelling of the feet and weight gain which are not very desirable for patients with type 2 diabetes so the newer generation of medicines are really good in the sense that they are good for the kidney some of them are good for the heart and in addition to that they also reduce weight there are couple of good medicines which actually instead of gaining they will help you lose weight so the moment you start losing weight what happens as i said before the insulin resistance will start to improve yes so choosing the correct medicines for each diabetic is very very important and if a medicine is selected correctly it is going to bring a lot of other benefits to the table for the patient like weight loss and all these things are going to really help and improve the person's lifestyle so once diabetes starts Uh, and you speak this word insulin. Everybody is like, "Up insulin!" Like, oh my God, I, you know, this insulin word is actually a big banner. कि अब इंसुलिन लगेगा तो अब तो मतलब नहीं नहीं मतलब हम तो हम बच ही नहीं पाएंगे हम तो बस अब हो गया अब इंसुलिन है तो if it you include insulin with diabetes, it becomes poison for people to listen also. कि भाई इनको इंसुलिन लग रहा है तो ये तो बस सब हो गया इनका काम. So why is it so? Like why people are scared of this insulin word? So yeah, there are huge amount of misconceptions, and I don't know why insulin is so villainized. It is yeah. it is mystified. Everyone yeah. could tell you insulin should only be used in the case of diabetes. Ha, right. So yeah, so let's get some facts very clear. Insulin is the safest, the best, and the purest of all the medicines which is available for diabetes. It is not harmful for you, and it has got huge number of benefits. Apart from controlling your blood glucose, it also helps in building up the muscle mass also. Okay. So it has got a lot of actions. And trust me, I don't know why I have not been able to get to the base of this ever. Probably it's the fear of being shifted to an injection. Yeah. And people really are so scared of insulin that once you start, people are many a time you lose the patient. Yeah. They not come back. Yeah. But things have changed on the insulin front also. So the new pen devices are very easy. Insulin pumps are available, okay. and uh, these make life very easy for people who are on insulin. But you have to understand that it is it is absolutely imperative to give insulin in type one diabetics. Mm-hmm. In some type two diabetics also, you have to give insulin because, as I said, insulin resistance is there. Yeah, yeah. The insulin level initially goes up. Eventually, it starts going down because finally your pancreas, from where insulin comes, is going to get exhausted. Mm-hmm. So that is the time you need to support it a bit with. Timely initiation of insulin. Understand that here you are helping yourself by giving little bit of insulin from outside. You help the medicines work better. Yeah. And by doing this, you are giving rest to your pancreas, so that it has its own insulin ready for any kind of medical emergency. So that endogenous set, that's what we call it. Endogenous insulin is still preserved if you give little bit of insulin from outside. Yeah. So all said and done, it is actually still the best medicine. especially you start it at the right time right. there is a lot of reluctance and i think if if i have to give one message to the general public regarding diabetes in this video is that don't be scared of insulin it's just that you should be started at the right time starting it too early or too late you're going to land up in trouble and your doctor will be the best person to identify okay this is the time to start insulin He or she will expect and identify the time. Okay, this is the time. Start it a little bit. It will do you wonders, and maybe it can be stopped also in some patients if it started on time. If you miss that window of opportunity, then and you exhaust your pancreas, so eventually you will end up with multiple injections. So the newer insulins these days, you just give one shot a day, give it once a day, along with a couple of tablets. Life is easy. I tell people like it's like taking one medicine instead of eating you just. Jabbing it. Yeah. So insulin is actually one of the best drugs. So uh, as we talk about insulin, if someone has a lot of insulin, if someone has a lot of insulin, if someone has a lot of insulin, see, you might have treated people with, uh, say, some cases where insulin is very low in the body, 
So that kind of people, because I know one of my friend's mother uh, who actually used to take a lot of insulin injections a day. So how does that work? Like she was must be you know like you just said type one type thing. So uh, why you, you just you said just a pinch of one and some lot of tablets? But with some people, uh, insulin is so low that they have to take like more than one or two so, injections. Again, let's be very clear. Type one diabetes is the one which is seen usually in kids, and obviously these kids grow up and become old also. Yeah. They usually thin. Yeah. These are the ones who have very less insulin, mm -hmm. and they have the fixed requirement of insulin, which has to go up and down, which is usually not very high. Mm -hmm. For your friend's mother, I'm sure she must be having type two diabetes. So what happens is, as I said, type two diabetes, insulin is there, but it's not working enough. So if it's an elderly woman who's obese, who's fat, yeah, she she's is. obese. So that basically what she has is insulin resistance. So in such a case, you keep on increasing the insulin, mm -hmm. it really does not help because whatever you are giving, that is not able to work. Whatever is inside, that is not able to work. Mm -hmm. So how do you make that better? The answer is simple. You use things which reduce insulin resistance. Okay. So what are the things which reduce insulin resistance? We've already discussed yeah. weight loss exercise and certain medications mm -hmm. so insulin along with certain tablets which are able to make the insulin work better mm -hmm. that is the answer for people like your friends now okay. thank you so much dr Kumar, for your time i had many myths it just got cleared and i think people who are watching this video if you still guys have some issues with the diabetes if you have high sugar levels if you think you might have diabetes just go seek your doctor it's a it will take hardly 30 minutes but I think it's going to cost whole your life with a different kind of lifestyle you would follow. Thank you so much doctor for your time. I appreciate the time you've given and the kind of knowledge you've shared with us and to the public and I think it's going to be really helpful for them and they can have early detections and a lot of other things which can help them in early detection of diabetes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.